I'm Kim Bauman. I'm chief editor of Nature Reviews Molecular Cell Biology, and I'm here with uh, Yukiko Yamachita, who is associate professor at the University of Michigan. So first of all, hello, Yukiko, and Hi. welcome. Um, so I believe that the main focus of your lab is uh, studying the mechanisms that regulate asymmetric cell division. Yes. But uh, at this conference, you'll be going to talk about something a little bit different. Yes. So I think you'll be talking about chromocenters, yes. is that correct? Yes, correct. So could you introduce a little bit what they are? I mean, I know they have mm -hmm. been described for about a century from a cytological right. point of view, but um, maybe if you can tell us what they are and then how did you become interested in them? Yes, uh, the last question first. Yeah. So we don't get to dictate what to study. <laughs> <laughs> so often case, uh, you know, the, our data, you know, mm -hmm. the lead us to the directions. So I think we pretty much bumped into this. Mm -hmm. um, so we have been studying asymmetric stem cell division for a very long time. And then probably, uh, when was that? Like four years back, we published one paper about asymmetric stem cell division. So for that uh, study, we needed chromosome-specific uh, repetitive sequence as a probe. Mm -hmm. So when we looked into this, uh, you know, the probe sequence just as a tool, um, inevitably we noticed these satellite DNA um, have very, very interesting distribution across all those chromosomes. So that really led us to, you know, to, to look into this satellite DNA, which is a major you know, the you know, constituent of the pericentromic heterochromatin. And this is satellite DNA, it's uh, really yes. they are repetitive. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It's a yes, repetitive that's, uh, uh, yes, uh, the repetitive DNA, and mm -hmm. then because it's, uh, you know, the repeat of, um, uh, so the very short tandem repeat, that's mm -hmm. why it skews ATGC content. As okay. a result, when you do the centrifugation uh, on, uh, you know, the cesium chloride, so that, you know, the, so those DNA, uh, the sediment at the different rate mm. compared to the major, um, you know, the euchromatic DNA, okay. that, that's the original reason they are called the satellite DNA. Mm. So these repeats, uh, you know, exist mainly in the pericentromic heterochromatin. Mm -hmm. And then this pericentromic heterochromatin has been known uh, to form chromocenter, as you introduced, uh, for, as you said, like about a century. Uh, but, you know, the both uh, the function of pericentromic heterochromatin, which excluding centromeric heterochromatin, that, of course, you know, function of a centromere is yes. very, very well known and established. But those pericentromic heterochromatin that exclude the centromeric sequence, uh, as well as what it forms, which means that's chromocenter. Neither of their functions have been known. All right. So, and then we decided to look into its potential function, and then we started a protein that binds to satellite DNA. Um, and then even, you know, the nowadays, you can do pretty much anything with CRISPR-Cas9. Mm -hmm. One thing you probably can't do is to really CRISPR out the entire, um, you know, the pericentromic heterochromatin. Right, that okay, because yes. that spans you know the ten megabase mm -hmm. sometimes. So, but what you can do is you can potentially uh, remove the protein that binds to chromosome, okay. and then we thought that's a really good starting point. And then, luckily for us, uh, once we remove those chromosome binding proteins, what happens is chromosome becomes dispersed. So. The proteins that you identify, mm -hmm. so you've identified mm -hmm. proteins that bind to satellite so DNA. We is didn't specific. So is it are these proteins specific to the pericentric area, or is it do they bind also as well? Correct. Where yeah, there, um, there's other satellite so DNAs, or the are they reason, specific? The reason yeah. we got into this protein was that prior, I mean, in the, you know the I, you know the probably a few decades back. Mm -hmm. um, people have identified biochemically, starting from simple repeat sequence and then to mm -hmm. see uh, what proteins might bind to it. And then through that, this protein has been known, I mean, its biochemical function has been known for a really long time that it, this protein binds to simple repeat satellite AATAT. But nobody really understood actual cell biological function of that protein. So, so that, that's why this time we decided to go into a little bit of detail to look at its phenotype and to mm -hmm. try to tie back to actual cell biological function. All right. Yeah. 
And so if you, what happens with the, if you, if this protein, if you remove yes. this protein? Yes. So first thing that happens is normally the chromosome is association of, you know, perisentum heterochromatin from many, many chromosomes. Yes. So is it one yeah. in yeah. a cell? Uh, it is, or is it? A few. So a for few example, if you have or 10 chromosomes in your cell, that could cluster into three, All for right. example. Okay. So yeah. it's. Yeah, but then if you you know remove this protein, and then you start instead of three chromosomes, that can be like six or seven. You know that number increases, mm -hmm. suggesting that uh, uh, the perisentrum heterochromatin association is somehow perturbed. Okay. Yep. And then next thing uh, that happens after you remove this chromosome protein is, so individual chromosomes start mm -hmm. floating out of the nucleus to form micronuclei, which was okay. quite a surprise to us. And this observation on a so summer. Yep. So is this, so during cell division, does it mean, or they, that in the interface. In the interface, yes. okay, so how, right. Yes. So this is interesting. So right. how, so how if you take a look at the, you know, the wild type nucleus, that is very stable, always round, mm -hmm. and then that stays that shape. If you perturb chromosome formation, you can look at the round, you know, interface nucleus. All of a sudden, this round nucleus started budding off to spit out a few chromosomes. Mm. So this really told us chromosome formation is a way to um, somehow link uh, all of those chromosomes uh, into a sort of the network. Not necessarily into one spot, but into but a, to keep them yes. sort of uh, together within. Yeah, that's within. what we think. Oh, that's interesting. So how? So you think that all all cell types have some sort of chromosome? Yes, or that is. So is it actually very very conserved feature? Mm -hmm. And this chromosome has been observed in essentially almost all cell types, I would say, mm -hmm. you know, the plant cells and then, mm -hmm. you know, the mammalian cells and then drosophila cells and mm -hmm. essentially any. It's amazing that so little is known about it, given <laughs> that it's been so well described I mean, for such yes. a long time. Yeah, so yes. that was also, you know, interesting discovery into the literature mm -hmm. too. So first we thought, okay, what we are looking at might be the chromosome and then we have to dive into those literature. And then we keep discovering, wow, well, not much is known, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and so do you have any, any? So can you tell a bit, us more, a bit more micronuclei? Mm -hmm. Because my understanding is that they can form during cell division. So right. at the end of cell division, yes. if something goes wrong. Right. So can you say a little bit more? And yes. how does, how do you think that links to your observations? So once my, I mean, it, we also looked at all those, you know, the bad things that can happen when micronuclei forms. For mm -hmm. example, nuclear envelope integrity is disrupted, you know, the DNA damage happens inside. Um, so there is, uh, you know, the similarity and some differences between those lagging chromosome induced micronuclei and then chromosome disruption, uh, you know, induced micronuclei. So meaning uh, when you disrupt the chromosome, what happens is not just the micronuclei, even the major macronuclei, uh, if I may say, this major or parental nucleus also have all those problems with, with uh, nuclear envelope integrity as well as, you know, the protection from the DNA damage. Right, so, so there is an increased uh, DNA damage. Yes, in so cases. I would say probably there's two things, uh, you know, the two pathways to lead to this final consequence. So one is once you have the lagging chromosome and then that can lead to micronuclear formation. And, and, as a, and then lead to nuclear integrity problem and so on. The other way is first probably uh, the nuclear integrity can be um, so heavily disrupted mm -hmm. if you don't have a chromosome. And then that can now lead to the micronuclear formation. So, uh, so with that said, I think you know, there, there's very interesting parallels, similarity, and then a little bit of difference to it. Mm -hmm. And so in which uh, cell types have you studied this? So it, is mm -hmm. it across more than one species? Uh, in which, yes. In which cells have you? So first we looked into germ cells in Drosophila testis, mm -hmm. um, simply because that's a model system we always work. Mm -hmm. um, 
but of course we wanted to know if this is you know the weird things about our model system mm -hmm. or not so we expanded this to many of uh, mammalian cell culture mostly mouse cell culture uh, because of the um, how to say once you make uh, you know the marker or for certain you know the pericentronomic satellite uh, it's mm -hmm. easier to go across many different kind of mouse cells instead of going to other species but we take a look at you know the fibroblast and then um, you know the uh, immune cells or many different kind of cell type mm -hmm. in the mouse and then phenotype is always very consistent. So, all right, so it's something that happens in very yes. different cell types, yep. a common mechanism. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, very interesting. And so do you think that you're going to be, is this going to become a, a major interest for your lab? So or is it, I, what it, is it that you're interested <laughs> in next? What are the next steps? Or? I would say for a while. Um, and then because, you know, the, not much has been known about the chromosome or pericenter heterochromatin. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot we can do. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to do uh, probably work on the many different aspects of this, you know, pericentric heterochromatin in the coming years. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think, you know, what we try in the lab is that everybody really takes on a very different project so that mm -hmm. when they become independent, um, not only they are independent of me, but independent of each other, you know, all those, you know, federal So that postdocs. they can pursue different exactly. lines of research. So this is a good strategy. Yeah. It's a yes. very nice <laughs> thing to do, of <laughs> course. So, so you that know, we can stay nice and to and each <laughs> other, all, you yes. know, for a long time, at least. So with that said, if we, you know, the butts off from this pericentral mechanical community, I, I, you know, I'm looking into the way that it's going to be very, very discreet from what we discovered you mm -hmm. know, here now. And so what about in terms of uh, satellite DNA? So how, how because you, you, do you do any other, other, do you have any other lines of research that are related to, um, you know, this repetitive sequence yes. across the genome? Is yeah. this something that you so are looking So a few lines, to? yes. yes. Um, so now that finally we are convinced that pericentrum heterochromatin has an important function, Yes, because it which has is been quite uh, yes. <laughs> important. <laughs> and then, which has been believed for a long time, the junk. Mm -hmm. So no, not many people really cared how this pericentral heterochromatin is taken care mm -hmm. by the host cells or you know, actual cells because they were believed to be junk or parasite, you yes. know, selfish DNA elements, mm -hmm. uh, even if they are not But they uh, are, very, they are yeah. very conserved, right, yeah. these areas. So is it not a little bit... So um, it's conserved in terms of the characteristics, Stru you know, the simple the repeats and the heterochromatic. But if you look at the sequence, it's mm -hmm. very, very different across the species. Okay. So that was one reason, for, I believe, you know, for a long time, people really didn't appreciate pericentric heterochromatin has such a fundamental cell biological function. Mm -hmm. So, but now that we know it has a function, I'm very, very interested in how this bust you know, the array or the pericentric heterochromatin is maintained. Mm -hmm. So this is probably a similar question to, say, telomere maintenance. Mm -hmm. That has been studied, you know, the, Before. you know, back uh, when, you know, the Liz Blackman, Carol Greider, started look into how this is really maintained, you know, what is, mm -hmm. what kind of enzyme doing it. Um, so would you mean in maintain also in terms of man the length, length and yes. that just okay. yep. yes. And then, so of course, you know, the actual problem, you know, the biochemical problem will be different because pericentromic is in the middle of the chromosome, so you don't have to worry about the endorophic replication mm -hmm. problem. But how to maintain a repeat, that's conceptually very, very similar. Mm -hmm. So, and then I believe there has to be some, some mechanism to maintain mm -hmm. this. So that's one thing I'm very, you know, yes. keen on doing mm -hmm. in the near future. Excellent, so that's, yeah, well, <laughs> yes. I look forward to <laughs> hear more about it. Yes. Right, so it's, um, and in general, I think, do you think that now that you've discovered mm -hmm. that there is, you know, more to the chromocenter and it yes. plays such an important function, do you think that there are gonna be more studies on the chromocenter? In uh, general, I mean, is it something you mean from you other people? Yes, also that <laughs> I would very, very look forward to it. Yeah, I mean, I think um, so. Of course, that's that might get into competition, right? Mm -hmm. But then, how to say if you're 
afraid of competition, that means you will be making discovery all by yourself. Mm -hmm. That's going to be slow. <laughs> so, but it's better yes. to be starting new fields and right, new right. right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's, so um, I, I would actually look forward to more people joining this, mm -hmm. you know, this endeavor. Yeah. Okay. Right. So thank you very much. Thank for you very time. much. And well, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and that you enjoyed the conference up until now. And I look yes. forward to your talk as well as yeah. it is going to be Thank you very, very soon. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.